pleasure from food when the food is in your mouth. The longer you can keep each bite of food in your mouth, the more pleasure you get out of less food. The problem is, again, we're a very busy society. So we have no time. We have like five minutes for lunch, and we have to woof our food down. Does anybody sit there and pay attention? First of all, am I hungry? And second of all, is we slow your mind, which we get more pleasure out of less, out of, out of less food. How many times have you had the incident where you're eating, and you look down, the plate is empty, but you don't feel satisfied? Although what you had in your plate was a lot of food. Because we're eating while doing a thousand other things. To me, again, when you're eating, try to learn to eat sitting down. Try to chew what you're eating. And try to pay attention to the flavors of the food. You'll find every single study ever done that is slow and mindful eating, you're going to end up eating a lot less food. Without, again, feeling deprived. The key thing is not feeling deprived. So slow and mindful eating is extremely important. Plus, the other point I want to say is that your body, and only your body can tell you how much food you eat. To me, counting calories is a complete waste of your time. For quite a few reasons. Number one, how long can you see yourself counting calories? Right? One week, two weeks, three, a month. I actually did it for six months. It was extremely hard. And after that, I did that with an experiment to see how does it feel. I'm like, how? No wonder people can stick with diets forever. Second, you know what the biggest difference is between people that gain weight easy and people who don't? You keep hearing, oh, they have a fast metabolic rate. <laughs> Wrong. Yes, they have a slightly higher metabolic rate, but it doesn't explain how can somebody eat twice as much as somebody else and they gain weight. And trust me, the metabolic rate is not twice as fast. Absorption rate. In other words, you and I can eat the exact same 1,000 calories. My body might only absorb 500, and the rest of them just goes through the system without getting absorbed. And the other, and you might absorb all 1,000 calories. By the way, you're the lucky one because you can survive on less food. That's actually a good thing. <coughs> a, I call it a more efficient metabolic rate, by the way. But also the absorption rate is much better, which is a good thing. The only proven way to increase longevity is to decrease calories. That's a fact. Undeniable fact. Every single study done on animals. And if you look at the longest living people on Earth, uh, Okinawa, these people on average eat less than 1,200 calories. But the, the problem is this. Food has become entertainment. So if I tell you to cut down your foods, I'm asking you to have less fun. That is the issue. And the way around it is 80% of the time eat for the right reasons. 20% of the time don't worry about it. Because the body can put up with some bad stuff. Next one, stop eating when you satisfy your hunger. And by the way, the way you can tell is really easy. When you're eating, and you're eating slow and mindful, by the way, you'll notice at one point that food no longer tastes as good. That's a sign right there you stop eating. But how many times do you say, ah, it's only one more bite, and I can't let it go to waste. But let me ask you a question. When you, you throw it in the garbage, or you throw it in your mouth, <laughs> either way, it's a waste. It's not like you save money by eating it. But I'm not right, because we gain weight by eating one or two bites more than we have to every meal. Nobody wake up, was thin one day, and then woke up the next day and overweight. It's a gradual process. People don't realize in, we gain weight in very small increments. And that's why we need to realize that one less bite, who cares if you throw it in the garden? Obviously, I mean, if you have chickens, it's great. In Greece, what we did, all the extra food went to the chickens and the pigs. So you still get some use out of it. But to me, I'd rather throw it in the garbage than throw it in my mouth if I'm full, regardless of what, I eat, what I'm eating. And that's a behavior you want to start getting into. Ask yourself, am I satisfied? Remember, restaurants, I mean, I also have a degree in culinary arts, so I used to be in the restaurant business. The restaurant, the, the portions have gotten really big. Why? Not because they want to, it's because the consumer demanded. So I know my uncles own the diner, and uh, they had to get the french fries larger because people were complaining it was too small. What do you expect the restaurants to do? Because I know the, the, the restaurants are getting a lot of flack from the government that, oh, it's their fault because they have these big portions. Well, what do you want the restaurants to do? What do my uncles want to have done? When people said to them that, oh, the french fries are too small. Oh, we're doing you a favor, you're too fat. 
Here's your little french fries. Of course not. They're going to give you more french fries. Their job is to sell food, not to watch your diet. So actually, I did a documentary back in, uh, by the way, these three habits are the most important habits you can develop, more important than anything else, all the food that you eat or whatever else. Are you guys familiar with the super sizing experiment you know, by Spurlock? Yeah. I did a similar experiment back in 2011. And I went to McDonald's for two months, not one month like Mr. Spurlock. I ate Big Mac, Chip Rivers, Sam Rivers, same food. The only difference was I ate only when hungry, I ate slow and mindful, and I stopped eating when I satisfied my hunger. And what happened to me? Nothing. My weight actually went down three pounds, and my cholesterol went down by 10. Eating the same food as Mr. Spurlock. My point was, not McDonald's is good, by the way, that wasn't the point. The point was, although I ate the exact same food as Mr. Spurlock, but had a terrible uh, health problem because of it, I had got nothing because I paid attention to my body. The point is, there's more to healthy eating than just, than just the food that you're eating. But you hardly ever hear about this three rules. And these three rules are how a healthy body battle, uh, better battle bad food. So if you ask me which is more important, this rules or what you're eating, these are the more important rules. Yes, obviously the best thing to do is and follow these rules and eat the right food. So, next habit, I think this way everybody knew about it. Eat more fruits and vegetables. Every single healthy region around the world eat a diet high fruits and vegetables. Not vegan. Okay, those are the other fitness nuts. They go a little bit too extreme. Okay? But I uh, know in Greece we ate meat on average once or twice a week. We eat fish some other times too, but I would say four days out of the week we really was a, a vegan diet. Every single healthy region around the world, that's how they eat. Okay, so, and again, the benefit is tremendous. I mean, again, if you do a whole lecture just on that, but I think everybody is in agreement on that. Make junk food special. Excuse me. Notice, I didn't say eliminate. It sounded to be a hypocrite if I was telling you to eliminate junk food, now I'm eating. Because the fact is, some, some junk food is okay. Besides, it takes way too good to give up. So, what I mean by that, make it special. My rule is this. Monday through Friday is the perfect diet. Friday after 5 p.m. and the weekends, everything goes. <laughs> so what's going to happen though, over time, even my weekends now, I, feel, I have soda, you know, like yesterday I had soda uh, last night, and I have my devil on the weekend, but I find that because I can have it every weekend, I can have one devil dog and be satisfied. Because I know I can have a devil dog on Sunday, I can have a devil dog the following weekend. But see, it's in human nature to want what we can't have. So if I told you, no more devil dogs for you, all of a sudden I'm like telling you, you want devil dogs. <laughs> and again, look at the fitness industry. That's what they're telling them. The nutritionists, oh, get rid of all the junk food in your house, this way you're not tempted. To me, that is wrong. And I tell you why it's wrong. I actually tell my client, keep the junk food in your house. Actually, I keep devil dogs, I keep my chocolate chip, my hot cookies in my house. Learn to control you, not your environment. Because here, let's say you get rid of your junk food in your house and you go to the office and a co-worker brings the junk food in. You haven't learned to control you. But that is why shows like The Biggest Loser and those other um, uh, weight loss camps don't work. Because if I take you outside your lifestyle, of course I can help you lose weight. That's the easy part. But what happens when you go back into your lifestyle and you go back to all these triggers that caused you to eat the wrong food? What's the plan? That's the problem is we're not teaching people to be, to rely on themselves. We try to control your environment. No, to me, learn to control yourself. And you do that with one habit at a time. Obviously, I said, there are tons of other stuff that you can do. But to me, those, I think it was six habits, are the most important ones, the one we talked about. Develop those, then worry about the rest of them. And there's tons of other things that will tell you, you know, that you need to do. Okay? So these are the habits. See, by developing these habits, it's going to get to the results that you want. And what's great about it, you get to maintain the results, 
because you change the behavior. Because here's an interesting thing. Nobody has a weight problem. Okay? And whenever I say that, people, what do you mean? You have a weight problem. I'm like, no, no, you don't have a weight problem. Nobody has a weight problem. What we have is a behavior problem. Weight is only a symptom of our behaviors. You know? And to me, it's like the perfect analogy. You know, I know Jim Ewing do bats, right? If, if, if somebody has bats in their attic, right? You can go in, trap the bats, get them out, while the bats can keep coming in. We have to fix how did they get in the first place. So you have to plug the hole, or whatever you have to do. So it's the same thing with weight loss. Most unfortunately, a lot of weight loss programs are focusing on the symptom. Because the behaviors what got us overweight. And unfortunately, behaviors are influenced by a lot of marketing. Marketing is a form of brainwashing. Because they're trying to, they're trying to that they try to get us to uh, do certain things so they can make money. Again, nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's how life is. But we need to become in charge of ourselves and develop the right habits. And that's, to me, that's how I help people get in shape and lose weight and keep them. Again, the question is, which way do you think it's, uh, you'd be able to keep the weight off? Using will, using self-discipline constantly, or develop the right habits. Now the negative thing about developing the right habits, it's gonna take you a little bit longer. But you can't wait. But I always joke around with people that, although I would say this is the slower way of getting in shape, okay? It's actually the fastest way of, of losing weight and getting in shape. And here's why. I know people who've been trying to be losing weight, the same 20 pounds for years, and they're still overweight. Why? Because they lose the game back, they lose the game back. Won't you rather take a little extra time, we'll talk about extra time, extra few months, and do it the right way? And this way you never have to worry about it again. The, the analogy that I like, I, I always use is, let's say you were the pilot of a Boeing 747, that's a big plane with four engines, and you fly into Fiji, okay? Plane takes off, and, it, and as soon as it took off, you notice, the plane is going the wrong direction. It's going towards Antarctica. And you're like, wait a minute, I don't want to go there. Now, because the previous pilot set up the autopilot to go there. What would make more sense? Grab the wheel, or whatever they call it, turn it towards the direction you want to go and fight the autopilot all the way to Fiji, or take your time and reprogram the autopilot so it takes you to Fiji. But obviously, or the autopilot. Well, we have an autopilot. It's called our subconscious mind. And that's sometimes my works on habits. Yes, it takes a little time to program it. By the way, that's what marketing does. We program the subconscious mind so we're doing things we're not even aware of what we're doing. And that's how you lose weight and you get in shape. So again, the, the, that's the question I ask people. It would make sense to do it the sustainable way. Now, let's get give you an example of how I would start. If let's say you were gonna start, you wanna get in shape, um, or you wanna get in better shape, you're ready to shape. Now, so how do you lose weight and keep it off? This is how you do it. One, you identify all the bad habits that you have and the <coughs> healthy habits you need to develop, okay? Regular in uh, order of importance, okay? So I always tell people start with the exercise part. Like I said, in your group though, you probably need a little tweaking most of you, especially if you work out in the field. Like I said, push up, work on the core, crunches, it's just fine. Oh, the other thing too is any kind of a hand uh, grip or like those bones to squeeze might be really good to build your uh, hand uh, grip strength. I don't know, huh? <laughs> there you go, that, that works fine too. <laughs> So, and then break down the one habit, the smallest increment possible, and start working on it. Okay, so I'll give you an example. Oh, and don't forget to change your success indicator. This is why this is important. Right now, most people use the success indicator as the weight. Okay, so it's the go on the scale, it's a lose weight, I'm doing well. If I haven't lost weight, I'm doing terrible, I better quit and go back to my donuts. 
That's the problem. Because to me, the success indicator should not be the way you're trying to improve, but how are you doing and the habit you're trying to develop. Okay? So in, for instance, let me give you an example on, um, let's say you want to develop a habit of exercise. And let's say you're in the office work, you don't do anything at all. Step one. Uh, make a commitment that you're going to walk three times a week of one minute. Yes, one minute. One, and ah, fine, you want to stretch it to five, I'm fine with it. Most people will look at me and say, what the heck will one minute do? It's not going to do much. But let's say you got home. And let's say I give you the recommendation that a lot of fitness professionals give, which is 30 minutes. You get home. You have a treadmill at home, let's say. You get home, you're very tired. You sit down, you look at the treadmill. You're like, ah, 30 minutes. I'm too tired. I'll do it tomorrow. On the other hand, one minute. You're like, ah, it's one minute only. Let me just jump on it and get it done. So what happens is you get into the habit of getting out of children for one minute or even getting up earlier in the morning by one minute and do the walk in the morning. And what happens is that becomes a habit, just like the flossing. And then what's going to happen is after a while, you'll find that one minute, because how many of you can actually stop after one minute? You'll find that after a while, it's going to become two and five and ten, and before you know it, you have the habit of walking every day. And again, the goal, by the way, always remains one minute. I'll give you an example for myself. I have three basic exercises I need to do every day. It takes me five minutes. The rest of them I call optional. Most of the time I do all of them, but my goal every day is to do those three exercises. By the way, push-ups one of them. I do push-ups, pull-ups, and uh, one-leg squats. Everything else, optional. So even I have days that I don't feel like exercising, and at least I will do those three things. And if I find most of the time when I do those three things, I end up doing the rest of them anyway. But that's the attitude you have to have. And then I would add the push-ups in there. Just do some push-ups in the morning. You don't need any equipment. And there's a lot of good videos on uh, that you can see demonstration of how to do push-ups properly. And that's how you show, once you get the exercise habit going, then go to the next one. The next one I would work on is to eat only when hungry. And the way that I teach the rule is I tell people, Monday to Friday, before you put anything in your mouth, ask yourself, am I hungry? And a quick way, by the way, to tell if you're hungry or not is, would I be able to indulge on a piece of stale bread? Right? Or something you don't really like. If the answer is no, I want something else, I'm hungry for something particular, you're not hungry then. That, by the way, that rule of eating only when hungry, it was drilled into our heads by our parents. Now, the question gets asked a lot is that, well, if let's say it's 12 o'clock, okay, I'm not hungry. By 1 o'clock, I have a meeting, and it's going to be a long meeting, it's going to run until 5 o'clock. What should I do then? Well, let me ask you a question. Let's say you got hungry in the middle of the meeting. <coughs> Big deal. Nothing happens to you if you stay hungry. I mean, like, change the definition of hunger. Look at true hunger as an opportunity for your body to utilize the stored energy that you have. Because basically that all it is is stored energy. I mean, in fact, also like we talked about before, hunger makes you smarter anyway. So if you're in a meeting, it would be nice to be, be able to think more clearly. So the hunger, they put this fear into us that hunger is something terrible, trying to avoid. To me, it's the best thing for your health. So that's the thing, it's not an emergency. You talk about like, you're not hungry, don't eat. And by the way, you'll find it easier and easier over time. In the beginning, it might be a little hard, but the way I did it, because at one point I had, <coughs> my diet had been, uh, the term I use, Americanized, you know, was, I, while I was eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then once I realized how wrong breakfast is, I stopped pushing it later and later. And I got to a point that I, was, I skipped it completely. Now I was eating only lunch and dinner. And I found that even for lunch, I wasn't that hungry. So first I pushed it later, and then I stopped making it smaller. And then I realized that I really don't need it. I was eating it just because somebody told me I had to. So sometimes, by the way, I do have lunch, sometimes I don't. I would say most of the time I don't during the week. And on the weekends, everything goes. Okay. Yes? Yes, yeah, it's funny when you have to go for the colonoscopy, you gotta stop eating for like a day and a half. Yep. And after like, I don't know, <clears throat> three hours, you're like, man, I should be eating. But then you know you can't eat. And then it really doesn't bother you for the whole next day that you have to eat. Exactly. And then after, you're like, hey, we're ready for lunch. Yep, <laughs> exactly. You'd be surprised at how your body will adapt. Yeah. I think you said there were six 
main points? Yeah. Can you just oh, sure. Things? Develop the exercise habit. But, but, but that doesn't mean you need to kill yourself. In other words, do some form of resistance training to challenge your muscles, and some form of aerobic training to challenge your cardiovascular system. Walking does the trick. Second is develop the habit of eating only when hungry, and ideally, no more than twice in one day. And I would say lunch and dinner. Um, Monday to Friday, weekend, like I said, relax. Third, eat slow and mindful. Pay attention. Enjoy your food. Chew your food. Fourth is stop eating when you're satisfied with hunger. Again, as soon as you notice that the food no longer tastes as good as the first bite, stop eating. As a matter of fact, the default always is, I'm not hungry and I need to stop eating. That's the default. Actually, Okinawa, by the way, they have the longest lifespan. They practice something which I cannot pronounce, but it basically means eat until 80% full. When you're done eating, you should never really be feeling your stomach. Okay? Uh, next one, eat plenty of fruits and vegetables. I try to tell people, yeah, they say eat five to six. That's nice. I have to tell people, try to get at least four fruits and vegetables in a day. And the last one is make junk food special, which is trying to eliminate, by the way, definition of junk food. Pizza is not junk food. French fries is not junk food. Chips are, by the way. They're just high fat foods. But if you want to pay attention to your hunger and you eat slow and mindful, you know what's gonna happen is if you're eating pizza, you're gonna be satisfied much faster than if you're eating a salad. The key here is pay attention to your hunger, pay attention to the food, and automatically, depending on what you eat, the body will tell you. The problem is we're not listening to our body. <coughs> so those are the main things that I want you to focus on that will make the biggest difference in your health. I, let's put it this way. 100% of my clients who have learned the first three habits, lose weight, before we even get into what to eat. And by the way, also on my, on my website, you'll be able to find I have a course it's called Lift In, Stay Thin, and basically teaches my whole program in videos instead of videos. So that one actually, did, that's, what my, that's the latest one, and that's what I did in videos. So you watch basically one video at a time. The video has instructions exactly what you need to do. Until you do all those things that I'm asking you to do, don't even go to the next video. And this way it's, um, I give things in a slow enough way so it can be absorbed. But again, the key is, and by the way, here's a quick way to tell if you can keep the weight off of a particular program or not. Simple question. Look at what the program is asking you to do and ask yourself, can I see myself doing that for the rest of my life? If that's it, the system is asking you to count calories, can you count calories for the rest of your life? If it's asking you to do some crazy workout, can I see myself doing this crazy workout for the rest of my life? If the answer is no, don't even bother starting because most likely you're not going to be able to keep with it. Okay? Any other questions? Yes? Stavros, I want to thank you, but now with all, all this mindfulness, what in the heck am I supposed to do with all those damn pastries? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your guy? It's Saturday. It's Saturday.